Just four days ago, the leaders of the two Koreas and the U.S. shook hands at the border village of Panmunjom for the first time 66 years after the armistice agreement. This was followed by an hour long meeting between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong un, catching many watchers around the world by surprise. President Moon Jae in, in regards to this historic diplomatic event, said that it signifies the end of hostilities and the beginning of a new era. Of peace. Today, we go in depth with Dr. Pong Young Shik, a researcher at Yonsei Institute for North Korean Studies, for more analysis on post Panmunjom strategies. It's good to have you with us. Very pleased to be here again. Today, July 4th, is a special day for both Koreas as the July 4th Inter Korean Joint Communique was signed on this very day in 1972. Can you tell us more about this July 4th? South North Joint Statement and its significance. Right. Uh, there was a first time both Koreas, uh, after the experience of the fratricidal Korean War for three years in 1950 to uh, 53, uh, engaged in a process of reconciliation and dialogue uh, between Park Jong-hee government of South Korea and Kim Il-sung regime of North Korea. And we have to put that in the context of the Vietnam War and the Cold War. Uh, the Nixon administration of the United States uh, began to uh, pull the United States out of the Vietnam War and made an announcement which was uh, shocking to many Asian nations, especially security partners of the United States, so-called Guam Doctrine, uh, that Asian allies of the United States had to be more, uh, assume bigger responsibility for their own security. Uh, which uh, signifies uh, to some Asian countries, including South Korea, that the United States might not uh, fully uh, respect its uh, security uh, guarantee uh, for Asian allies. So uh, South Korean uh, President uh, Park Jong-hee felt a great deal of pressure to engage in reconciliation uh, and the reduction of military tension process with North Korea and engage in uh, uh, the uh, increase of the self-defense capability of South Korean military at the same time. And for North Korea, the Kim Il-sung regime also shared the concern about possibly sudden disruption of the deterrence uh, between the two Koreas. So Kim Il-sung and Park Jong-hee uh, made a very strange bedfellows uh, to agree upon dialogue and uh, negotiations, uh, which resulted in uh, the first uh, um, you know, meetings at the high official levels between the two Koreas. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, the July 4th joint declaration remained quite symbolic and abstract. And with the exchange of the uh, separate family uh, reunions, uh, the uh, July 4th joint declaration did not really uh, move the process of inter-Korean reconciliation any further. So 47 years have passed since the July 4th joint declaration, but the two Koreas are still struggling to find ways for peaceful reunification. Major steps have been made, though, with U.S. President Trump shaking hands with leader Kim Jong-un at the border. President Moon Jae-in has called it, has said that it was technically an end of war declaration. Do you agree with him? No, I do not. I think President Moon's interpretation is too um, ahead of the very cold and unfortunate reality on the ground. Uh, because the end of hostility between North Korea and the United States is not something that uh, the government of South Korea can decide or render official judgment. Uh, it has to be decided and agreed upon by North Korea and the United States. What constitutes the end of hostility at official levels? Um, there are some uh, measuring sticks that can be applied to uh, our understanding of the definition of end of hostility between North Korea and the United States since the signing of the 1953 Armistice Agreement that suspended the Korean War. Uh, whether uh, the both uh, governments would make official declaration that uh, they had just ended the hostility since the Korean War. That's one method. Second method would be opening 
uh, liaison offices in uh, both countries' capital cities, Pyongyang and Washington, D.C., or they engage in major uh, process of diplomatic normalization, or completion of diplomatic normalization would be the icing on the cake um, to officially recognize the end of hostility between the two adversaries. But as I said, um, the end of hostility is something that only North Korea and the United States uh, can define. And I think the um, idea uh, expressed by uh, South Korean President Moon Jae-in is to boost the optimistic uh, atmosphere surrounding the dramatic third summit meeting between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to uh, maintain the momentum, to maintain very positive and hopeful attitude uh, toward the uh, end goal, which includes the official end of hostility, because ideas have power. I, when, as long as you maintain the positive attitude, it will definitely help all the related parties to look forward to the uh, possibility, rather than just uh, uh, you know, give up hope on very difficult reality. So I do not say that uh, his pitch that the third meeting between Trump and Kim would uh, basically constitute the um, unofficial end of the hostility between North Korea and the United States as a message for hope or the uh, uh, incentives uh, to, to uh, encourage these uh, countries to engage, continuously engage in dialogue and negotiations to achieve the goal. But uh, as a definition wise, uh, it, does, it fails to constitute the acceptable stage of the end of hostility. Now, North Korea U.S. working level talks are expected to take place soon, but tensions are once again rising at the United Nations. North Korea has leveled fresh criticism against the U.S., saying that Washington had sent a letter to U.N. member nations urging the repatriation of North Korean workers. On the same day, President Trump invited Kim Jong Un via his tweet. On could, the same day, mm -hmm. right? Could this be a factor that could perhaps undermine? the, the long-sought dialogue between Pyongyang and Washington? It might, but uh, I think North Korean side is in a desperate position, uh, judging from the fact that Chairman Kim Jong-un agreed to show up uh, to have the third um, de facto summit meeting with U.S. President Donald Trump in the border village of Panmunjom, uh, which could have seen as a, a sign of desperation uh, of North Korea under prolonged and harsh economic sanctions. And the expression of anger about this uh, uh, United Nations um, measure uh, to encourage the repatriation of the North Korean workers from abroad uh, can be also interpreted in the same context that North Korea is really hurting under the pressure of economic sanctions. So any measures taken by the United Nations or unilaterally by United States or other countries uh, in ways to um, keep sanctions in place would be responded by North Korean authority in a very uh, in a critical ways. Uh, the bottom line is really clear. The United States will not easily lift economic sanctions on North Korea uh, because they have watched uh, so many uh, clear signs that North Korea uh, is really desperate and the sanctions have been really working on North Korea. So unless North Korean authority is going to demonstrate clear signs of taking concrete steps toward the uh, final and fully verified denuclearization, FFVD, then United States and the United Nations member countries would not easily uh, move away from the major economic United Nations Security Council resolutions, including um, the resolution number 2397, which stipulates a return of all North Korean workers uh, abroad, uh, back home. North Korea, meanwhile, reportedly picked its former ambassador to Vietnam, Kim Myung-gil, as its chief nuclear envoy uh, to serve as the counterpart of U.S. Special Representative for North Korea, Stephen Began. How credible do you think this report is, and what does this tell us about North Korea's new negotiation strategy? 
Well, tongue in cheek, uh, the U.S. side uh, would be disappointed that this is another Kim. So there are so many Kims in negotiation process. Kim Yong-chul, Kim Hyok-chul, Kim Jong-un, um, Kim Yo-jong now, Kim Myung-gil. Uh, so United States has to sort out all the names again. But at the same time, United States negotiation team would be happy that this is not another Chol or Kim Hyuk Chol or Kim Young Chol. <laughs> so they can avoid a further confusion, right? Now it's uh, somebody uh, whose name ends with Kil. Um, more serious matter that Kim Young Gil uh, participating in the uh, North Korea's diplomacy in the United Nations. Uh, members of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs a, as opposed to the national security team uh, under the, uh, the authority of Kim Yong-chul. And uh, he served as ambassador of North Korea to Vietnam, in which the second summit meeting between U.S. and North Korea took place, meaning that he is well qualified to represent the negotiation team um, of North Korea uh, with the United States. Choi sun the first uh, vice minister of foreign affairs, uh, has been uh, reportedly uh, considered as a counterpart for the special uh, representative for North Korea of the Trump administration, Mr. Stephen Began. But now the political clout and the official uh, stature of Choi sun has been elevated to the level of vice minister or even higher. So, I think North Korean government concluded that uh, Choi Sun-hee would not be in the appropriate ranks uh, with Mr. Stephen Began to be the counterparts of the further working level negotiations. Now, following the historic DMZ encounter, U.S. media outlets are raising the possibility that Washington might settle for a nuclear freeze of North Korea instead of its uh, long-stood stance of FFVD. Now, Began and Seoul's Foreign Minister Kang kyung both denied the reports, but what do you think fueled this speculation? Well, I guess we have to uh, take their words uh, at their values. And not only uh, Minister Kang kyung of South Korea or the uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo denied the veracity of the New York Times report that the United States government um, began to seriously consider the freezing as an option, but the report also was also flat denied and criticized by National Security Advisor John Bolton. So when you combine all these voices, then I don't think the freezing um, has been um, regarded uh, by the Trump administration as uh, one of the new uh, approaches toward North Korea in the next rounds of negotiations. So I wouldn't read too much about this as a, a real change of a negotiation. Uh, strategy or attitude of the Trump administration. Uh, the strategy remains the same. It's a pursuit of double FVD, final and fully verified denuclearization of North Korea. What do you think would be the key in the upcoming Pyongyang Washington nuclear talks in order to resolve the nuclear deadlock? Well, had I known the answer, then I would have been working in the White House or the Blue House or so, somewhere. I wouldn't be here. But you're still uh, but, an expert. Right. Um, but um, I would say that uh, Yangbyon's status or value uh, must be um, somehow reached a reasonable agreement, a reasonable a mutual uh, assessment. And a uh, uh, full and reliable report of North Korea's nuclear face capabilities and uh, produce the materials, as well as clearly define and agree the roadmap uh, to the final goals, uh, have to be the common goals for both negotiation teams in the, at the next rounds of working level negotiations. Otherwise, you cannot really assess the value of a Yongbyon nuclear complex unless you have the full uh, assessment of the entire capacity and the materials uh, uh, that North Korea has as a, a nuclear a power state as it claims. Uh, so debating the value of a nu nu nuclear complex in Yongbyon is uh, uh, interlinked with the assessing the entire capacity, uh, the missile and nuclear capacity of North Korea, as well as having um, the joint roadmap to move toward the common goals, including denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula and ending the hostility uh, since the Korean War between uh, North Korea and the United States. Now, uh, Began has stated aboard a plane heading back to the U.S. that he was, quote, 
open to some give and take along the way to the goal of complete denuclearization. Does this signal that Washington may have softened up a little in its stance? We have to wait and see. Um, I think it is all totally up to what U.S. President uh, Donald Trump is going to do. But I don't think, judging from his uh, statements made uh, during his stay in Seoul, South Korea, and uh, in the aftermath of his meeting with Chairman Kim Jong-un, I don't think President Trump is going to lift existing coming sanctions uh, so easily or early. Uh, he did not forget to add to his uh, remarks uh, to South Korean President Moon Jae-in or North Korean Chairman Kim Jong-un or to the press that uh, he said all the nice words about a bright future ahead, but he did not forget to add that, but sanctions, sanctions will remain in place. And I'm in no hurry. Uh, the words must be really devastating and disappointing to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. But judging from the remarks by U.S. President, then other than uh, supply of humanitarian aid, uh, which exists outside the purview of existing United Nations Security Council resolutions and the unilateral sanctions uh, by the U.S. government, nothing major changes are likely to happen. Bad news for North Korea. All right, Dr. Bong, thank you as always for your analysis and your sense of humor tonight. Thank you. And that does it for this edition of News In Depth from all of us here at Arirang. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you right back here, same time tomorrow.